boy, I wouldn't want to be surprised by that set of claws underwater. And on our next segment, you'll see an animal that uses suction cups and hooks to capture its prey. Lurking just below the surface of the waves, on this idyllic day at the beach, are voracious predators. Every summer they are delivered here to coastal New Jersey by unpredictable currents, driven by wind and water temperature. In the evening, they come to the surface to feed, gorging themselves throughout the night under the cover of darkness. Then, when the morning comes, they try to return to the cold, dark depths where they can digest the previous night's meal undisturbed. But the shallow waters of the coast inhibit their ability to hide during the day. Sunlight penetrates to the bottom, exposing them for who they really are. Who are these periodic alien hunters? They're the naked sea butterfly. Also known as sea angels, these one to two centimeter long, semi-gelatinous animals fly through the water like birds. Well, maybe not as graceful as birds. More float, like miniature satellites, constantly adjusting their orbits by beating their little wings. They are mollusks, which make them close relatives of the clam, the octopus, and the snail, but are even nearer relations to sea slugs. Instead of crawling along the bottom and scraping algae off rocks like their fellow slugs, Naked sea butterflies have opted for a free swimming approach to life, rarely if ever contacting the bottom. They normally live way offshore in the open ocean environment, but are occasionally brought in towards our beaches in extremely high numbers. They are found the world over, but are more abundant in colder waters. As floaters, they are members of the plankton. And plankton, by definition, spend their entire lives at the mercy of the surrounding currents. They're called zooplankton, zoo means animal, like animals at the zoo, and plankton means floaters. Zooplankton, floating animals. Naked sea butterflies, as with most zooplankton, can swim a little, but not well enough to really have much control over their destinies. They swim just enough to avoid sinking out of the good hunting grounds. As I said before, the naked sea butterfly comes close to the surface at night to feed. They beat their little wings as hard as they can as darkness approaches, following some of their favorite prey items up into the shallower water. If given a choice, the naked sea butterfly would prefer to eat Limacina, a close relative to itself. Limacina has a protective shell covering its body, where the naked sea butterfly does not. In fact, the naked sea butterfly uses its cousin's shell against it. When Limacina approaches, the more agile naked sea butterfly makes its move by extending three suction cups, called buccal cones, out of its head and grabs Limacina by the shell. It then impales its prey with a set of hooks it keeps close to its mouth and pulls Limacina from its shell and feeds. A dark colored belly is a sure sign that it has fed recently. Many organisms in the open ocean go through the daily routine of up towards the surface at night and down into the deeper waters during the day. And it all starts with the smallest and most vulnerable animals coming up to feed on phytoplankton. Phytoplankton are floating plants. Zooplankton, floating animals, come up at night because it's dark and they're out of the sight of predators. And the phytoplankton are always up close to the surface because they're plants and plants need light to photosynthesize. Plankton are often found in such high concentrations in the ocean that depth sounders on ships can show a false bottom because the sound waves cannot penetrate the plankton layer. When the bottom appears to move close to the surface at night and then back down during the day, you can be pretty sure you're looking at plankton. And as is the way of the world, when you and a bunch of your buddies find yourselves on the good hunting grounds, it's just a matter of time before your predator finds himself an easy meal. Well, that concludes another episode of Marine Life. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned something. So until next week, see you at Jenkinson's Aquarium.
Pink in the sheet.